Here's a little update to the iPhone 12 Pro that um, I said it was soldered on here. It looks like it might just be glued, actually. So I'm going to heat it up at very low heat, 265 degrees Celsius, airflow 15, and see if I can peel this thing off and see what it looks like under here. If this is the case, then it's probably not going to be too horrible to get this thing uh to be able to work on this board, it would just be like the others, you know. But I, I don't know if this is soldered now, or I, I think it might just be taped, actually. But it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense if it's taped. But it looks like I can peel it off, so let's see, let's see how it goes. Kind of hard to grip on it, since I don't really have anything holding the logic board right now. I'm starting to think more and more that it is indeed glued. Because it feels like it's... If it is soldered, it's it's a very... Very weak solder joint. And it's just like an antenna or something. It's probably just an antenna, yeah. So it wouldn't make sense that it would be soldered. But I think it is glue, actually. Oh, shit. It is soldered. Damn it. Hmm. Okay, that's what it looks like on the other side. And uh, I guess, uh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess it would make sense since it has these two little things on here that kind of tell you where to solder it. So. Well, that really sucks. I don't even know where the um, thing is now. Like, is there a mark here that tells me where to start solder? I don't get it. Well, that really sucks. See, I see, I see these two things right here, but I mean, how exactly do I line it up? Hmm. That is weird. Well, I guess maybe these little dots here, maybe? Looks like there's a dot here. Oh man, this is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> it's going to be a nightmare, man. Why do they make it like this? This is terrible. This is awful. <sighs> okay, so let's see. Let's think about this. So I see a little dot here, and then I see a little dot kind of like here. But there's all these random dots everywhere. And then there's a looks like there's a dot here, but how exactly... I mean, there's nothing to line it up with here. like this okay so it looks like these dots are actually in the middle of the two pads so you really want to I mean based on the you can see the impression on the logic board here so if I line this up like this but how exactly am I going to solder it back <laughs> since there are no holes on this thing that's going to be a nightmare. Oh my god. It's better not to take it off, I think. But how are you not going to take it off in order to work on this logic board? I don't get that. Anyways, alright. Well, I guess we're back to square one. And this, this thing's going to be a pain in the ass to fix. Sorry, I'm going to cut back into this video here. And I just wanted to add one thing. Let me see if I can get my, camera, my microscope somewhat uh, in focus here. <clears throat> okay, so this is some sort of antenna pad here, okay? And there's one, two, three, four, two, four, six, twenty-four pads here, okay? 
And I just want to add that not all, most of these pads are ground, and there's only four pads here that are not ground. So those are the only ones that you really need to be concerned about in terms of when, when you get it back together. Uh, just make sure it doesn't bridge. And I don't think there's any way that we're going to be able to test this uh, after we put it on. I'm assuming we can get it on, like, fairly uh, efficiently and uh, so that it works. But anyways, I'm going to tell you what four pads are required that are not ground. It's going to be this one right here. And then, so this one is 0.22 in diode mode. This one right here, this one's 0.738 in diode mode. This one over here is 0.390 in diode mode. And this one is 0 0.40 in diode mode. So one, two, three, four, the rest are ground, okay? So just make sure these suckers don't short. Make sure you're connecting it on so that, uh, you know, this, this little connector here is, is making contact with this connector right here is making contact with these on those four points properly. Otherwise, we're, we're going to probably run into some issues. Um, I'm actually going to probably just wick this a little bit, just because it looks like there's just way too much solder on there now. So, just... <laughs> I mean, ideally, like, I think maybe it's better if we just don't remove this thing, but I just don't know how feasible it would be to fix these logic boards without removing this thing and putting it back. So as you can see, the ground pads, it's sticky. So I'm just going to kind of like get all the stuff out of the ground pads. And then, because I'm not really worried about the ground really that much. And then I'm going to put a little extra ball on these. So that's, those are the ones I'm going to tin. The ones that are, oh shit, that's the wrong one. Damn it. <laughs> it's this one I want to do, okay. Anyways, whatever. Alright, so that, that should be fine. So that's it. And then, I guess we should probably tin this a little bit too. So if it's, let's see, if it's like this, let me just do it in my head here real quick. So it's going to be, so it's going to be like, so it's going to be one, two, three, four. All right. So let's put a little bit of flux on it. I mean, we haven't even started the repair on this thing and we're already worried about <laughs> getting this thing. Uh, right. This is just like a side thing. It's not even, it has nothing to do with the repair and repairing it is going to probably give me a show in itself. So I think I'll probably just do this and maybe just kind of go around it like this. Just put a little bit so that it's not oxidized. Just a little bit all around here. And then I'll just put a little bit more on the other ones. On the ones that are actually required. Okay. Alright. Alright. I'm putting this back because I think I think what happened to this logic board is that it something was smashed on it and uh, I if you look closely at the interposer and the the bottom board you'll see that it looks like it's kind of protruding a little bit so I think I think most likely the uh, the pads are kind of ripped here and I don't think we're gonna be able to fix this anyways the customer wants it back so we're just gonna we are going to oblige okay so I think. I think it's going to be just like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else, how else to line it. I'm sure there's some sort of trick to it, but I'm not really going to worry too much about getting it perfectly lined here because this is not. Yeah, there's no easy way to do this, my friend. No easy way. I can tell you that this is definitely not the way to do it. <laughs> this is definitely not the way to do it. Uh, don't use solder on the back of this sucker. Because I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. <laughs> Let's try a little heat. But I need to take my hand away first. Alright, let's just try this. 
So this is just low, gentle heat. 265 and 15 is what I'm using on my quick uh, 861DW. I'm afraid to lift my finger because I think it's going to pop off. So let me try this. Let me try this. Should probably turn it up just a little bit, the heat. This might be a little too low. Who knows if it's actually sticking or not, but I'm actually going to turn up the heat a little bit. Because I'm not 100%, I'm not really that concerned that... Because I think this board is dead anyways. See, look, it didn't even, it didn't do anything. Dang it. Pop right back off. Stupid. Well, I guess I could just tape it or something, I don't really know. Not really sure how to what how to best do this, but anyways, point is if you don't have to remove this, don't remove it uh. But I don't, I don't know how, uh, how feasible that's going to be. Um, you know, the alternative is taking the battery out and then unscrewing everything. <laughs> but that may be the, actually the better option for now, at least. I guess maybe it's better just not take this out in general. Just don't take the logic board out if you can, unless you have to split the boards. Which, I don't know if anybody's actually doing that now. I think people are probably practicing on it, but don't think anybody's actually like splitting the board to fix it at this point. Haven't seen anybody do that at least. See, look, I just did this, and it, look, it didn't even take. <laughs> hey Google, turn on FM two zero two. I'm gonna try to take a big, big soldering iron to it, and, and uh, doing it that way. Let's see if that works. So this is my FM202, and I can feel that the logic board is really hot already due to my use of heat here. But this definitely seems to work better, but although I'm not certain if I'm grounding everything right now or what I'm doing, but this is definitely better. So I guess what you could do is just use like a... Yeah, this is definitely better. But the problem is I don't know if, if it's all shorted down there now, you know? Who knows if it's shorted or not. I'm sure there's a way to check at some point, but I'm not going to do that. Because I'm calling it a day on this one. <clears throat> Alright, I just want to give you guys an update on this iPhone 12 Pro here that has these some issues. Repairability score is still zero. Okay, maybe it's not zero, but it's not great. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We 
created an online course hosted at udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here, there's a coupon code that uh, gives you $50 off of our online course. So our online course, it was created by Tom and myself. Um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically, we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get fifty dollars off. So thank you for watching our channel, and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.